If a man is called to be a street sweeper, he should sweep streets even as Michelangelo painted, or Beethoven composed music, or Shakespeare wrote poetry. He should sweep streets so well that all the hosts of heaven and earth will pause to say, here lived a great street sweeper who did his job well. That's a famous quote by the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, and that quote reminds us that everything that we do in life, we should do it with the spirit of excellence and to always give 100%. That quote also reminds me of the diversity that's in this room right now because each and every person under the sound of my voice has a very unique skill, gift, and talent. And it's up to you to actually find out what that is. In my talk today, I wanna to talk to you about diversity and what diversity is. We oftentimes think about age, race, socioeconomic class, and gender when it comes to diversity. But today, I would like to invite you on a journey with me to look at diversity from a new light and a new perspective. Is that okay? All right, so let's buckle up and let's make this ride happen. Okay. The first thing I wanna to talk to you all about is diversity of identity. Diversity of identity. And so I have an iceberg that's pictured behind me. And when we think about diversity of identity, what I want you to realize is that this iceberg is representative of how you have two portions of who you are. The very small portion at the top is what we allow people to see but then we have a very large portion that we have underneath the surface. Sometimes we don't allow people into that world. And it's very important that we become holistically transparent and that we understand that a part of who we are is not just what we allow people to see, but also those things that are underneath the surface. I recently spoke to a group of middle school students and I talked to them about the importance of going to college, setting goals, having a vision for your life, fulfilling the mission in your life, and after the end of this recent talk, I gave those young men an opportunity to ask me some questions. One of the questions that actually surfaced was, you are a professor, right? I said, well, of course, I told you I was a professor, so I have a question for you. Have you ever failed a class? Have you ever messed up? When you were in college, what are some of the challenges that you faced? Now, the honest truth, and I'm very glad that I can be transparent about this, my first semester of college, I made every grade you could imagine. I made an A, a B, a C, a D, a F, and I even had a instructor give me an incomplete because they didn't want to fail me. <laughs> it was a biology class, and I remember the instructor, I went and I talked to him, and he said, you come to class every day, and I see that you're trying, and he says, so what I'm going to do is give you an incomplete and allow you to retake this class without having to pay for it again. And the reason that I share that is I oftentimes have students come into my office and they get discouraged because I am an educator. And when students get discouraged, I can remind them that you need to hang in there because I know what it's like to fail a class. Being an instructor that has not made a 4.0 every semester brings diversity to my institution. Somebody who can connect to those students from underneath the surface. Because some instructors, you can clap if you want to clap. Okay. Mm -hmm. Some instructors will want to hide that and not allow students to know that they have failed a class, but that's about being transparent. It's about letting people know that I'm not perfect. And there are even some deeper pains and wounds that some of you all have experienced. Someone in this room knows what it's like to struggle with depression. Someone knows what it's like to struggle with suicidal thoughts. And everything that you have been through allows your wounds, allow you to become a warrior, and allows you to connect with other people. So when we really identify with who we are, we know that the things that we have been through that are underneath the surface, there is a time when those things have to bubble up. We can connect with other people and begin to have true, authentic understanding of what diversity really is. I want to share with you, recently, I pulled out my app and I needed to take a, a, give, give me a driver. And so I got my little driver, he came and picked me up and we were kind of talking and he was a Muslim and I was a Christian. And when he began just to kind of talk about his faith and uh, he was telling me about some spiritual things, we really connected. And if you were thinking that a Muslim gentleman driving a Christian gentleman, that we would probably have some conflict in a ride, right? No, but instead of focusing on the differences, we focused a great deal on how we actually agreed and the things that we had in common. And one of the things that this young man told me when he was driving me is that there is no such thing as being self-made. He said, when people say that they are self-made, I look at them and want to laugh. How can you call yourself a self-made billionaire or a millionaire? And what he wanted me to know is that every single experience that we have gone through, and think back to this iceberg here, those things that we don't want to share, 
the people that we have in our lives, those people actually help us to keep us humble when we achieve our greatness. Okay? And so now I want to take you on a, a continue on our journey and take another little stop here. And we're going to talk about diversity of thought. Okay? Diversity of thought. Diversity of thought is very important. We oftentimes hear in public education that we need to encourage young people to think critically, right? I hear that all the time in, in, in public school teachers as well as on the higher ed level, that students need to engage in critical thinking. And what critical thinking allows you to do is to move beyond just simply seeing things on the surface and allowing you to utilize your voice to bring about new thoughts, ideas, and perspectives. But even in the midst of that, what oftentimes happens is we tell people, young people in school to think critically, then they go and they graduate and they land their first job in corporate America. So let's take you have a young person, 23 years old, just finished school, land their dream job. This corporation says that they're very excited about having this young person work in this corporation. This young person is very excited about being there. They show up to the conference room to meet with the CEO and other executives and have some ideas that they want to bring to the table. And yet this diverse group in this corporation says that they are excited about having this young person bring forth ideas. That person is greeted with rejection. Or they hear things such as, we've been doing this the same way for 30 years. Why would we do that? Why would we want to make our corporate newsletter that we send out digital to save money? We'll just continue to print it. So these young people want to bring new ideas in, but yet we shun them. And so how can we begin to have diversity of thought within our schools, within our churches, within our community groups, to celebrate the uniqueness and the differences that we all bring? And you can clap it up for that as well. Okay. Yes, yeah, so diversity of thought. I also want to speak about this as well because I want to challenge each and every one of my educators that are in the audience and teachers. In the classroom, we need to allow students to speak more. Sometimes students' voices can be oppressed when we go through class and we have 50 PowerPoint slides and they're just sitting there taking those copious notes. But do you actually have two-way conversation in class, allowing students to share feedback about what they think about the world in which they live? And one of the beautiful things about diversity of thought is not about necessarily having to agree with everybody's idea and perspective, but learning to celebrate people's voices and giving them an opportunity to be heard. I would now like to move to transformative diversity. So I've talked about diversity of identity and how we have an iceberg, and we have the very small portion that we allow people to see, and then we have some things underneath that we don't allow people to see. I've talked about diversity of thought and how we need to celebrate different perspectives and ideas. And now I'd like to share with you about transformative diversity. And this is where we're really going to bring everything home. This is the applicable piece of my talk. So Courtney Brazil, how do we apply what you, just, what you have been talking about? So when we think about transformative diversity, what comes to mind is tug of war. And if you're on one end of the rope and you're trying to get people to think differently, it can be a challenge when you're trying to pull people into new perspectives, new ideas, and new ways of thinking. I worked at a community college called Eastfield College for eight years, and one of the joys of not only being able to teach there, but a project that I worked on was starting a minority male student club. And we actually called this club the Men's Empowerment Coalition. It was a challenge getting these guys together. And so I was really focused on working on recruiting African-American and Latino males. Now, at my campus, I had administrative support. I had many colleagues that supported the work that I did. But I would also hear things such as, why are you doing a club for minority males? Why are you all not doing anything for women? And so that can be very challenging when you are trying to even bring about the diverse idea in the campus of why we need to even have a minority male initiative. Well, I'm going to answer that question. When you look at research nationally, African-American and Latino males are the least likely to graduate in comparison to other groups. So as being a male myself, I deem it important and necessary to get involved and to do the work and to do some transformative change. One of the things that I did was I traveled with these guys. I would bring in different speakers, have different workshops, seminars, teaching these young men how to tie a tie. I would take some of them to national conferences, 
Many of them, when I would travel on a plane, have never even been on a plane before. So I'm even wanting these young men to really see that their world is bigger than where they live and where they are now. But again, it was, you can clap, yes. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> because the key to identity is exposure. And so I wanted to expose these students to something different, to allow them to excel to higher heights. And so with this transformative change, I not only worked with the male students at my campus, but I would oftentimes invite local high schools to participate in the things that we were doing. This picture that you, that you see behind me has a few of our local high school students that attended a men's leadership luncheon that I coordinated. We ordered some food for the guys, we had a speaker, we recognized students from the Student Government Association, we recognized male students from Phi Theta Kappa, the National Honor Society for Community Colleges, and so every group that I could imagine that had males, we wanted to actually give these guys some recognition. And when those young men were called up on stage, sometimes that was the only recognition that some of them have ever heard. One of the young men that I even mentored to this day, he was so proud and he actually put his certificate up on social media because we actually gave him what we call the SWAG Award, which actually stood for a student with academic greatness. And so working with these males is all about transformative change. And although people would say things such as, why are you not working with females? Why are you not doing this? You're going to always have your naysayers. I have to continue to pull the rope and to stay in my lane and do what I know that I have been called to do. R remember, I shared a quote with you by uh, the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King. And it talks about being a street sweeper or whether you paint like uh, Michelangelo or whether you compose music like Beethoven, my job was to work with that male initiative. And I even tell students in my classroom, don't allow people to try to go in and change the vision of what you have been called to do. People need to stay in their lane, stay in your lane, there won't be no wrecks. You over in my lane without your blinker on. So stay in your lane and there will not be in any wrecks. Okay. I want to leave you all with this, is that you can make the change. And can is an acronym. Whatever you want to do in life as it relates to diversity. And taking that challenge to allow those around you to think differently and to be a change agent. The C in CAN stands for consistency. You have to be consistent in what you do. It's going to be hard. It's going to be rough when you're doing the work. Sometimes you will not see immediate results, but you have to remain consistent. Secondly, you have to have the right attitude. Because when you're at the table and wanting to persuade people to do some different things, you can only do what you believe that you can do. So if you don't believe that you can make change, if you don't believe that you can be progressive, if you don't believe that you have been called to be that voice, then you're not going to do it. You will only live up to what you believe that you can aspire to. And the end in can is for being willing to negotiate. Because some change is not going to happen overnight you have what I call gradual change. And so sometimes you have to go ahead and put your feet on the ground and have that matrix moment, learning to work with the dynamic of the people that you have been assigned to work with, learning to see what works, what doesn't, bringing new ideas to the table, even when those ideas are rejected, but be willing to negotiate and have a voice at the table. We live in a very divided political climate right now. We even have an increasing number of women who are stepping up with what is called the Me Too movement. There is such a need in our nation for diversity. And so my topic today, which is diversity in an undiverse world, is not really saying that the world does not have diversity, but there are some groups and schools and organizations and even churches that think that they are celebrating diversity, but they're really not. You have to be that change, and I want to leave that charge up to you. So I hope that I've said something today to inspire you to think about diversity in a new light, whether it's diversity of identity, thought, or making that transformative change, know that you can do it. Thank you.